Hello everyone. In this lesson, we will learn how to customize the appearance of Sublime Text. When it comes to customizing the appearance, there are two main factors. Number one, a color scheme, and number two, a theme. So let's start with number one, a color scheme. The color scheme is obviously what controls the colors. So when we think about syntax highlighting for all of the different programming languages, and when we think of the main background color for this window. So for example, let's imagine that dark background with light colored text hurts our eyes, and we want a light colored background with dark text. We can look in the Sublime Text menu for preferences. On Mac, that's under Sublime Text. Preferences, now we are looking for color scheme. Here it is. Let's go into color scheme default. So by default, Sublime Text uses Monokai. If we want a color scheme with a light background, let's try Mac Classic. And that's really all there is to a color scheme. Now let's ask ourselves, what is a theme? So a theme is everything that a color scheme is not. So for example, a color scheme changes the colors of the area that I'm highlighting now. So the main editor and the tabs, the color of the tabs. A theme, on the other hand, controls the appearance of our sidebar, and it controls the appearance of this bottom status bar. And a theme can also adjust the shape or design of our tabs, whereas a color scheme can only adjust their color. So let's try switching to a new theme. Now out of the box, Sublime Text doesn't ship with alternate themes, but we can use the command palette and package control to install packages that pull in new themes. So let's open the command palette, command shift P on PC, it's control shift P. Let's begin searching for install package, here it is. If you do not see install package in your Sublime Text, that means that you have not installed package control, the package manager. So be sure to rewatch our earlier lesson on that topic if you need to. So we want to install a package, so I will hit enter. All right, now I know the theme that I'm interested in is named Flatland, so I can begin searching for that. Here it is. But in your case, you might still be on the hunt for a theme that you like. So in that case, perform a web search for Sublime Text Package Manager, visit the top result, and you can use that website to browse and search for the top 10 themes or the top 100 themes, and you can see screenshot previews of the theme. And once you find one that you like, then you can come search for its name in this Install Package menu. All right, so I know that I want this Flatland theme, so I will press enter. So now we've installed the theme, but we still need to activate it. Activating your first theme can be a bit tricky, so I will try to take this slow. First, we are going to look for our user settings file. So we can find this by going to Sublime Text Preferences and choosing Settings User. All right, and I'm now going to paste in a bit of code that tells Sublime Text which theme I want to use. Now, you are most likely wondering where I got this code that I pasted in. I got this code from the same website that I just mentioned that you can use to browse and search for themes. So once you're on that website and you find a theme that you like, be sure to look for instructions on activating the theme and it will usually give you this line of code that you can copy and paste. So now I will save our changes to this file. And if I quit the Sublime Text application and fire it up again, we can see that Sublime Text is using the new Flatland theme. Our sidebar has been customized. It's using different folder icons. The design of our tabbed interface is different. And here's the real kicker. Most themes come bundled with a perfectly matched color scheme. So here's a surprise. Let's go into Sublime Text Preferences, Color Scheme. We see that when we installed the Flatland package, it also gave us color schemes. So I will choose Flatland Dark. And now we have a theme and color scheme that are in perfect harmony. And this is the happy ending to our lesson. Now I will say that if you're someone who switches themes quite often, 
you might want to check out a Sublime Text package named Themer. Having said that, this is the ending of our lesson. Thank you very much for watching. I hope you feel like you learned something. In our next lesson, we will learn about various tweaks we can make to Sublime Text to increase its usability. So this includes things like making our blinking cursor or caret larger, increasing line height between our code, and even learning how we can split the editor window into two, three, four, five, ten different panes so we can edit different things at once. That should be a lot of fun. I will see you then.